Hello my most amazing artists! Today we're going back to our Heather Galler inspired flowers for spring. Heather Galler is an artist that uses ink in her art to make different shapes, lines, designs, and patterns. So we had different ideas of how you could use say circles or different designs and lines to make some flowers of your own. Heather Galler is known as a folk artist, which means she uses a lot of those bright colors, lines, designs, and patterns, but might not have been a trained artist. A lot of folk artists that lived at the time had a similar style of where their art would be very unique and not like the others hanging on the museum walls. Heather Galler is an awesome artist and I cannot wait to explore all of the color in her art. Last week we worked on the black and white outlines because that's what comes first. So we used an ink bottle to do this without squeezing the bottle and starting at the top of the paper. When you start with just circles, you can go ahead and make different half circles or even swirls or zigzags to make your flowers because they don't have to look realistic. They can be a little abstract. I am showing some of my flowers overlapping to show variety and depth in my artwork. By showing some that are overlapping, it looks like they're hiding behind others, which makes them look a little bit more realistic. So by showing depth in my artwork with some overlapping, it looks awesome. And I don't have to worry about any big spots of ink because those flowers aren't going over top of the others. They're hiding behind them and I'm not showing that. I'm pretending that they're hiding. I made sure to stop at the middle of my paper because once I got to the middle, that's where the vase should go. So once I'm in the middle and I have all my flowers connected and no floating flowers left, I could draw my vase. I made a curved line at the bottom to make it look 3D. Then I made a table because that's where it would sit on. Now that flower pot could have patterns, your vase could have patterns, your table could have patterns or tablecloth, and even some of your background could have patterns if you wanted to, but it doesn't have to. Plus, we're gonna use some color today, so don't worry if you didn't have time to add some things, you could always do it today. Now that that ink is totally dry, we are going to be using neon oil pastels to start out with. Now I'm going to use my neon oil pastels to color in some of the smaller details of my painting. Maybe areas where I couldn't get a paintbrush in so easily. I'm just going to color some spots of my painting. Maybe I'll even do some patterns or designs. Because if we remember, oil pastel says to paint, get off me paint. So wherever you do oil pastel coloring today is where the paint will not go. It'll push away the paint. So if you want to be painting something, make sure that you do not color it with oil pastels or there will not be any room for it. So I am just going over some areas with the neon oil pastel and then I'll make sure that I leave some room for the paint. I'm just getting in some details. I would say at least one detail on every flower. I can even do wallpaper or something on the walls in the background if I want to. If you decide to use a white oil pastel and it looks dirty, you can just scribble on the back of your paper and that'll start to clean it off. Any areas that you want to keep white do need to be colored with a white oil pastel today. Then you can start to paint. I'll bring you the paint when I see that most of your areas are covered with oil pastel, but not entirely colored to leave some space for the paint. When we're using these paints, they need water to wake them up. So I dip my brush in the water, swirl around in the paint. The longer I swirl, the brighter the color will be. Then I go ahead and paint. I'm making sure to keep my hairbrush or my paintbrush hairs in a very good hair day. Never go into the booty scootin' ballet by smashing that paintbrush down. Always keeping it on its tippy toes like a ballerina. Then I'm making sure that I also am getting in all the white spaces. Whenever I go to switch my color, I'm making sure to give my paintbrush a good bath in between. I'm using a variety of colors. When I'm done, I might even get that special black light flashlight to check out my colors and see what it looks like in the dark for our glow art show. All right, artists, I cannot wait to see what you create. Make sure you get all your areas painted and put it on the drying rack when you're done.